Hello and welcome to this time of worship, this time when we come as we are before the living Lord, to be met by him, to bring before him those things that are on his heart and so also on ours, especially for those we know, love, care for, for those things that matter to us in the world at this moment, when we see there is so much bitterness, pain and division that's going on in so many different places across this world. We come to give thanks, we come to praise and worship and to pray about all of these things. As we come to worship now, let's take a few moments just to still our hearts and to be open and to be ready. Come Holy Spirit, we pray. Reveal Jesus to us. Reveal the depth of your love for, for us and for this world. Lord, help us to lift our voices in praise and worship, to give you thanks and to pray for this world for which you sent your son Jesus, to die, to bring salvation and transformation. And Lord, we thank you for your this time. Thank you for your presence with us in this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We are in this season of Lent, that time of reflection. And as always, we have that time in our service where we pause to reflect on the state of our lives, if you like. Bringing before the Lord those things where we know that we're not as he would want us to be. Knowing that we haven't always acted or thought or behaved as he calls us to be. Yet, as I always will say, let us remember who God is. He is love. He is holy. Yes, that is why we are aware of those things where we fall short. But he is gracious and compassionate and wants us to move forwards, not to be bound by those things, but for our lives to be enriched and set free from any sense of, of guilt that we may carry as a result of the things that are going on in our lives so that we, we might blossom, grow and flourish. So again, let's take a few moments to be still as we prepare to bring those things before the Lord. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the first of two readings, the first of these coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 12, is reading from verse 1, a very short one that talks about the call of Abram before he becomes Abraham. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And the second comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3 from verse 1 to 17, and it starts off with this encounter with Nicodemus. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can a man be born when he is old? asked Nicodemus. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so now let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the living word who continues to speak to our lives. Help us now by your spirit to hear what you are saying and help us to listen to. In your name we pray. Amen. There's a lot in this passage and uh, I don't necessarily want to say too much because there is so much. My thoughts are possibly therefore just directed towards 
those at the end, those familiar words that we hear. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. At the heart of God's mission, there is this foundation of love. That word loved is rooted in the Greek word that gives us uh, the word agape. And that is a kind of love that is unconditional, that is so deep that we cannot fully maybe express it in words. It goes beyond just sentimental feeling. It's that deepest feeling that often we will know, even as human beings and people, about how something and someone matters to us in such a way that we cannot help but be stirred to do something about it. It's, it's that deep love that we we know at times that we may feel for parents and children and loved ones, those for whom we know we will do anything for. It's that kind of visceral love, if you like, that God is expressing through Jesus for this, his world. And by golly, how he must look out upon this world he created it so beautifully and be pained by it. Even more so maybe at this very moment, again, as I keep coming back to in mind to different crises that there are around at the moment and the impact and on ordinary people's lives of what some people are choosing to do to others to destroy sometimes pointlessly and needlessly their cry goes out why why do we do this to each other so readily as human beings causing hurt and pain to one another and it's into this world as we know that jesus comes to bring salvation to bring transformation a transformation that starts within each one of us in our hearts in, in the earlier part of this passage it talks about born again and uh Sometimes I, I'm aware that that can store, stir up different responses in me because it almost becomes a bit like a, a slogan, doesn't it? If we're not careful, I'm born again. But I then want to ask, well, what happens after that being born again? It's more than just a slogan. It's, it's about a start of a journey of, uh, of transformation. It's the start of a, a journey into new transformed life and living whereby we are changed deep within, within our hearts so that we may be people who live in a completely different way than maybe we did before in a way that makes a difference because people around us see and know the effects of that because of what they see within us. There's this word believe as well, those who believe in him. And I sometimes feel a bit uncomfortable with that word believe as well as we understand it so often maybe in our culture today. It seems to me so often it's associated with almost like intellectual assent to concepts and ideas, belief. It's very easy to believe in something. Like, for example, it's very easy for, for me to believe that this is, this is a good, solid chair. It doesn't mean anything until I sit in it and realise that it, it can actually hold my weight and provide a, a place for me to be able to talk just like this at the moment. 
The key thing in that word is trust and confidence. That's what it really is about. Not just believing with our minds, but trusting with our whole beings, our, our hearts, our minds, our guts, letting go really of everything and taking that risk to let ourselves be wholly held and carried by the Lord's grace and his love. Trusting, having confidence in who he is and that confidence being the basis of why we're prepared to take that risk sometimes in the face of the uncertainty of what may lie ahead. And that phrase also, eternal life, is not just about life when we die. It's about a transformation of our life that makes a difference now, in the now, and that will continue through death into life everlasting with the Lord our God. And so those words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, have a significance and a meaning for life today. For as we trust in that, we enter into the the kingdom of God, the kingship of God, the rule of God. And we enable that rule, that kingship of God at work in us, to work out through us into the world and to make a difference in the world, bringing light, light kicking against darkness, standing up and speaking out for those maybe who are marginalised, prejudiced against, discriminated against, those who are being destroyed. Which maybe links back for me to those words of Abram and that call. The call that he has to go, to go to where the Lord is calling him. He has no idea really fully where the Lord is calling him. He's just told to go and he does, he responds. Quite a big thing it must have been for him to leave that comfort uh, and security of where he was rooted, to go out, to venture out into a completely different place, unknown. And he did so purely because he had trust and confidence in who God was for him at that point in time. Now, whether he fully understand it, God, maybe as we do today, because we've, uh, of course, seen the, re the understanding and revelation of God through Jesus as the God who is love. But nevertheless, he knew enough to hear that call, to set out, to trust, to have confidence in who God was for his present and especially his future. And what he hears from the Lord, and I'm just going to find those words in this passage. He hears that he will be made into a great nation, that he will be blessed. But perhaps even more so, and maybe for me this is the part that's particularly significant, is that he is told that through him all peoples will be blessed. All peoples will be blessed. And of course, Jesus ultimately is the means of that too. And through Jesus's work on the cross, being lifted up through his work by his spirit within us, we are today those who are about bringing that blessing, bringing that blessing to this hurting world, to broken lives, to carry that message of that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that 
no one may perish, but have eternal life. We've heard that maybe for ourselves, because somebody spoke that to us, somebody showed that to us, we've read it. There's still so many who haven't heard that. How now are we going to get that message out in such a way that people will not just hear, not just hear us sort of shouting it out as some will want to do maybe on a corner and everybody passes by, but to hear us by who and how we are, that they might take seriously that message because they see the difference that it is making in our lives and in the lives of our communities. So now let us pray as maybe we commit ourselves to be the means of that blessing, of that salvation through Jesus and that transformation in lives, including our own, but our communities and this world so desperate to know that light will eventually overcome darkness. Let us just now be still for a few moments. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your love is such for this world for this broken world, for broken lives, that you sent your son Jesus to be amongst us and you lifted him high upon that cross. You exalted him so that we might be set free so that we might find hope, new life, salvation, transformation by trusting in him and by letting him, by his spirit, come and live within us to transform our lives, to transform our hearts, to transform our behaviours, our attitudes and our actions so that we might become people who don't just bring that message by our words but by our actions as we seek to bless the world in your name and see lives, communities, nations changed and ch and turned towards you. Realising and knowing that we are your children, part of your family. Knowing your healing, your peace, your reconciliation. And so, Lord, we cry out. We cry out for, for this world, conscious of that pain. And our part so often, at times maybe even in little ways, but ways in which we find ourselves sucked into destructive patterns. Lord, in this time, help us to continue to reflect in this season of Lent, to be aware of those things we know deep within us that need to change and to let your spirit calm ever deeper into our lives so that it may be your life that is seen more and more shining through and how we are. And Lord, we 
want to bring before you those that we know or we are aware of whose lives are broken, those who are struggling with ill health. Lord, we ask for your peace, your healing, your hope in these lives. Lord, we pray that the, these people that we bring before you in a few moments of quiet, we pray that they may know your transformation in their lives. Lord, we thank you for the way that you are at work. Thank you that you are at work in the lives of these people that we have brought before you. And we bring these prayers to a close by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so as we prepare to go out into the world, into the reality of daily life, whatever that may bring for us, let us do so with the words of God's blessing ringing in our ears and maybe giving us that confidence to find moments to share something 
of what God is doing in our lives, our awareness of his presence, his peace and his love in the midst still of challenging times, I'm aware, for many. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you all or those you know, love, care for, pray for this day and evermore. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. Bye for now.